Well, it's finally warmed up and it's time to get some of the greenhouse stuff out into the garden and get some more seeds into the greenhouse. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's get to it. So here's my little collection and we've got a few things that are ready to go out. Like we've got our green collie, which has probably been left a bit long. We've got some kohlrabi and a slug. Coriander's gone kaput. European gooseberry hasn't come up, but we'll leave him for a little while yet. Now these cabbages, got a little bit too long in the uh, root section here, but they'll be fine. And these are a, a gold cabbage that I can actually grow all year round. So we'll put them out. Some red cabbage, not all of them have come up, but a few are there. Green cabbage, again these are all year round. More gold cabbage. You might be able to tell I've overdone the cabbage a little. Uh, but so what we really need to get in here is our summer. I've got some of the summer plants here. There's some tomatillos, which I'll get in. I need to thin out my tomato seedlings here. These are uh, tigerella. And what else have we got? Some asparagus peas. Zucchinis, honeydew melons, and trombosinis. So let's clear all this out and get some new stuff in. First thing I've got to do with tomatoes is one thing I hate doing, and that's thin them out. So you see here I've got three in here. I'm going to take the two smallest ones out, just snap them off. Take these two out. A sec. Very carefully picking the strongest ones. I generally try and snap them off rather than pull them out. That way you don't disturb the roots of the, the others. If they regrow you can just sort of chop them off again. And there we go. I have eight tigerella tomatoes. So we'll put them out shortly. I've got my zucchinis. How many have I got in? One, two, three, four, five have come up, which is more than enough for summer. And look at that. This may not seem like much to you guys, but this is grown from seed and it's really, really hard to germinate these black currant seeds. So I've only got one out of all of the ones I've put in this little tray, but getting one is a really big achievement. Happy chappy here. So I'm going to put him into a pot, put him somewhere nice and sheltered, and see if we can get him to grow. So for the black currant, I want to keep it nice and mild on the fertiliser front. So I'm going to grab a handful of my all-natural blood and bone, stir that through, make a nice deep hole for it. Another pricky little fella. Ah, okay. oh, look at those roots. Look at those roots, isn't that good? I'm going to drop him in there. I'll take a sweep. No, I won't take a sweep. This is uh, the sea soil. So I'm just going to put a bit of that around to help him grow, to get established. Now we shall mulch it. I have a problem. I'm out of triple C. I didn't realise it. I'm going to use what I normally use for my mushrooms, which is just sugar cane mulch. And that's okay because it's really just to keep the moisture in.
There we go. Shall water that in well, put it down the side with my other black currant, and fingers crossed it'll live. I have sapodilla. I have some large seeds for sapodilla. I'll put a link to what they are in the description. But very tasty fruit. So I'm just going to start them off in fairly small pots. These little fellas. I shall keep buying sapodilla seeds until I get success. So I have the three of them here. Put them in reasonably deep. Little pinch of blood and bone for when, if they do sprout up. So just a little pinch. And then we cover it up with the cover it up with the seed raising mix, which is much finer. Three sapodilla in a little tub. Water them in. Hopefully they'll grow really well. Hopefully they'll just grow. Next one we're going to get in is peanuts. They're always fun to grow. I've got two sorts of peanut here. Now, you can go down to your health food store, <coughs> and if you're just growing them for the sake of eating them, I'd suggest you do that. Buy raw peanuts, and I've had them grow, and get peanuts from them. However, what I want to do is know what sort of peanut I'm getting, and I'll save some of the peanuts myself for regrowing if I like them. So I have peanut, big pink, that's from Wendy's, and I have Peanut, the Virginia bunch. So I'm going to put a couple in each of the trays here. It's in one of my one of my 21 cell trays. So that means I'll get all of my Virginia ones in here. You don't need to see me, so let's just pop these in. One per cell. Let's just cover it up with some seed raising mix. So I'll put them, label them, and put them out in a nice warm place. You might think that I'm planting far too many peanuts, and you'd be right. I'm probably not going to be able to fit these everywhere. But again, I shall go to my good friends at the community garden and see if anyone else wants to grow peanuts and give all the extras there. In case you haven't seen, I've created a Ask Me page as well. You can ask me any garden-related question I will use my 30 years experience at a university as a researcher and teacher and that sort of thing to find you an answer. And this will cost you the grand sum of one Australian dollar. All proceeds will be going to the community gardens, uh, initially the one in Vic Park, but uh, if we're successful in this and we raise gazillions of dollars, which I very much doubt, I'll be giving it to the uh, West Australian Community Gardens Association. So, if you want to make a donation to Community Gardens, please do so and get something out of it. Ask me a question. Anything at all on gardening and I will look it up for you. Use some proper research methods to find correct answers for you. Not. And that's important, get correct answers. Okay. Let's pop him away. I gave away a whole stack of uh, passion fruit vines that I'd grown. So even though I've got enough in, I'm going to plant some more of my own grown from seed ones. And these are just a standard purple passion fruit. Very tasty. I just chuck a couple of seeds in each tray. Oh, sorry, each cell. Two or three seeds. All right, here we have some normal red, standard red uh, passion fruit from my own seed. And this will be to replace the ones that I gave away. So let's restock our passion fruit. <laughs> what else have we got in here? Got enough goji berries. Now that one can go back. Pickling cucumbers. Let's get another one of those large trays. I have really got to find somewhere to store my trays that are a bit cooler. I've just opened a brand new packet. And look at them. They've melted. And they're absolutely no good. Phooey. Right, lucky I've got some more. 
You'll notice in these larger trays, I'm just using standard potting mix. A couple of reasons for that. First one is it's cheaper. And the second one is that it's got a little bit of nutrient in it for the seeds. And because these are larger trays, I'll leave them in there longer. So they'll need a little bit of nutrients just to get established. These are cucumbers, but they're specifically for pickling. So they are crisper, I suppose, and have a much thicker skin. So they don't go slimy like the uh, normal cucumbers do when you try and ferment them or pickle them. I will be fermenting some of these, and that will be an interesting experience, because uh, I'm starting to really like the fermented food, but I haven't fermented cucumbers so far. So let's put these in. I'm going to pop two seeds in each so that we've got one to fertilize the other when we plant them in pairs and I'll grow them up a trellis like my other cucumbers if you want to see that video I'm not going to have enough for two in every one so at the end I'll just do one in each cell and plant them close together when they come up Put the seed raising mix over the top so it's nice and easy for them to sprout out and over we go I have a lot more cucumbers but I've already put some out some normal salad type cucumbers but in a few weeks I'll plant some more just so that we've got a nice long growing period of cucumbers because we really like cucumbers and the flight path again today inner city living Next one I thought I'd get in for um, for the summer is more for the lady curmudgeon and the bees, uh, and there's some flowers. And I've always been rather neglectful of flowers. I sure I've put in a few sunflowers, some seeds I saved from last year. Um, but I don't put in many normal sort of flowers. So what I've got here is a uh, native daisy, uh, paper daisy. And I'm just going to make it bit of a tray up of those, it's one of those large trays that I've got, which I will then transplant into the garden when, when they've sprouted, if they sprout, which they should do. So I'm just going to sprinkle a few in each of the punnets here, we're going to press them down, it's a tiny little seed, so we don't want to cover them very much. Right, I've just sprinkled them on top there, I'm going to get my other tray, put it on top, just press it down a little bit, get the seed raising mix, lightly sprinkle over the top, and there is a tray of paper daisies. As I said, nice Australian native, and get him up somewhere to germinate. Well, there we go. That's a few of the things we're planting at the moment. Got lots more to get in. The, uh, the garden's a bit bare at this point, and the weather is becoming really nice. So what are you planting at the moment? Anything interesting? Yeah, it's all interesting anyway, isn't it? Doesn't matter what you grow. It's all good. So on that note, enjoy life. Catch in the garden.